This is Kim Newlove, host of the Pharmacist Voice podcast. Thank you for joining me for episode 84. If you're new to the show, welcome. I alternate solo shows and interview shows. The solo shows are about my career change from pharmacist to voice actor, and the interview shows feature a variety of people who use their voices to advocate, educate, or entertain. My website is thepharmacistvoice.com. How are baking cookies, completing a chemistry experiment, filling prescriptions, publishing a podcast, and narrating an audiobook similar? For each one, you need a plan and you need some kind of workflow. During my career transition from pharmacist to voice actor, I've had to figure a lot of new things out. There have been lots of firsts, and I've had to draw upon knowledge from other times in my life when I also had to figure things out. Do you know what I mean by a plan? A plan is like a recipe. With a recipe, you have ingredients and directions. How about workflow? Do you know what I mean when I say workflow? Workflow is how you make the recipe. It goes beyond a list of ingredients and steps. Workflow is all those little things that you do to get from the start line to the finish line. I like to bake cookies. I'm actually really good at baking cookies. Give me a simple cookie recipe and I can probably figure it out. Ask me to bake that same recipe a second time and I'll do it even better. Why? The ingredients are the same. The equipment's the same. The directions haven't changed. Why would I be able to do something better the second time? It's because I've already done it before. I know the plan, and I can figure out how to improve the workflow after the first time. Maybe I'll lay all the ingredients and equipment out along with the recipe before I even crack the first egg. That way, I'm not looking for things while my hands are dirty. Maybe I'll go one step further and pre-measure the dry ingredients into little bowls like they do on cooking shows. They sure cook fast that way. Have you ever forgotten to turn the oven on while you were making cookie dough? I have. If I don't have a preheated oven and I only have 30 minutes to bake cookies, I'm out of luck. I have learned from my mistakes. Now, every time I make cookies, I preheat the oven. Preheating the oven is now part of my workflow. This is going to sound like a stretch, but I think my cookie baking experiences helped me succeed in chemistry lab in college. When I went to pharmacy school, I had to take so many chemistry classes that I ended up with a minor in chemistry. Chemistry lab was a part of general chemistry and organic chemistry. I happen to really love chemistry, but anyone who has taken a college chemistry class with a lab knows how much work labs are. I spent hours in those labs, and they were only one or two credit hour classes. Doing chemistry experiments was like baking. You have your ingredients and directions, but it's up to you to figure out the workflow. Sure, I learned a lot from the instructors in the lab, but they couldn't teach me everything. I took general chemistry and organic chemistry at the University of Toledo in the late 1990s. I don't know what it's like now, but I'll tell you what it was like for me. I had to read each experiment and complete a worksheet called a pre-lab before I could even enter the classroom. It was like this pre-lab was admission to get into the classroom. After the very first time in chemistry lab, I recognized the competitive aspect of it. There were probably 20 students in the class and sometimes only one bottle of a chemical needed for that day's chemistry experiment. We only had so many scales, too. When the doors opened for my second chemistry lab, I got to work as soon as possible. If there were five chemicals for the experiment and there was only one bottle of something, that was the first thing I went for. We didn't have enough of each item for everybody to have their own. In a way, chemistry class was like the Hunger Games. Have you ever seen that movie, The Hunger Games? If not, check it out and you'll understand. If you know what you need, you go for that chemical first. 
If you make alliances and negotiate with other classmates for the other chemicals, you can get everything you need for the experiment quickly and get it done fast. Each time I went to lab, I had an opportunity to improve my workflow, even though each experiment was a little different. I learned from the instructor, but I also learned by watching others. Kind of like watching a cooking show, except with chemistry. My classmates were like chefs. You learn what works and what doesn't work by watching others. If you're smart, you learn from other people's mistakes so you don't have to make your own. Whether I was baking cookies or trying to complete a chemistry lab experiment, planning and workflow helped me get the job done. I drew upon that wisdom when I became a pharmacist and had to fill prescriptions. Our previous life experiences help us with the next ones. When I worked in a community practice setting as a pharmacist, most of my first year was on midnights. However, I trained on first shift, second shift, and mid-shift for six weeks before the midnight shifts began. I worked at more than a dozen stores in the Downriver Detroit area while I was training. It gave me a chance to learn about workflow. Then I started my role as a midnighter in Toledo. As a newbie, seeing a wide variety of pharmacists and technicians do their jobs was an education. It really helped. By the time my six weeks of training ended, I knew how to do the job. There was only one problem. On midnights, I worked alone. I was pretty new to the company, and I didn't have any help. I was 23 years old and running a pharmacy in the middle of the night all by myself. My training taught me how to be a pharmacist when other staff were around. No one told me what to do when I was alone on midnights. It was up to me to develop a workflow that worked for me. I had to develop a workflow that didn't include technicians or doctor's offices being open. When you're the only one in the department, you have to figure things out. Every once in a while, I called other stores. I learned what worked and didn't work for other midnighters, common pitfalls, and so on. I asked, what do you do when this happens to you? And after a few weeks, I got good at working alone. When I started this podcast episode, I mentioned that I'm constantly learning how to do things for the first time on my journey from pharmacist to voice actor. I draw strength from the fact that I've figured out how to do a number of things in my life by making or following a plan and smoothing out the workflow. When I first got into podcasting, I didn't have any workflow. Dave Jackson at the School of Podcasting taught me how to plan and launch a podcast, but there's no way he could have taught me how to make a podcast fit into my life. He doesn't have a module on being Kim Newlove, wife and mom of two, with all the moving parts that make me, me. I had to figure out my workflow over time. My workflow has to do with how I get it done. I have to pick a time when my house is quiet. Remember, I have a husband and kids. Plus, before I even think about pressing record, I need to know what I'm talking about. I need an outline. Otherwise, I'm going to ramble and the value to the listener will be lost. When it comes to show notes, I need to boil down mine to the most important 300 to 800 words in the episode, including any links and highlights. When it comes to episode artwork, I try to include my podcast artwork, the episode number, the guest's name and picture, or something relevant if it's a solo podcast. After all, the episode artwork ends up on my website and several podcast players. But when it comes to releasing my podcasts, that part is super easy. I set them up to publish every Friday at 12.30 a.m. Eastern Time in the United States. That's the easiest part of the whole process. It's taken time, but I have a good workflow for podcasting now. On a similar topic, I graduated from Sean Pratt's nonfiction audiobook narration course in September 2020. Now that I'm recording audiobooks for authors, I'm developing a workflow. This is still all very new to me. But every time I complete a project, I know it's going to help me improve my workflow for the next book. My transition from pharmacist to voice actor has been full of first-time experiences. First time running recording software. First time setting up a USB microphone. First time setting up an XLR microphone. First time using an audio interface. First time working with a coach via Skype and then Zoom. First time using Audacity. 
First time using Studio One Artist. First time using RX8. First time producing a podcast episode. First time recording an audiobook. The point is that after the first time I do something, I know what to expect and it gets easier. It's true of baking cookies, getting through a chemistry lab, filling prescriptions on midnights, producing podcast episodes, and recording audiobooks. Planning and workflow help me get things done. Let's wrap this up. If you're doing something for the first time, give yourself some grace. I know I do. Think back to some other times in your life when you've had to learn something new. Did you have a recipe? Did you have a plan? Did you have the equipment you needed? Did you watch someone else do it first, like a cooking show host, a chemistry lab instructor, a pharmacist you trained with, a podcast coach, or an audiobook narration coach? I look at all the things I've learned how to do, and I'm amazed that I can do some pretty cool stuff. The first time is always hard, but when I have a plan and develop a good workflow, I get things done, and you can too. Thank you for joining me for episode 84 of the Pharmacist Voice podcast. Please visit thepharmacistvoice.com to subscribe and read the show notes.